This is a simple introduction to the properties of plasticine experiment. First of all, the measurement of mass. The top of the small plastic pot here at the end of my elastic is on 50 centimetres. And we've got to calibrate the elastic in order to measure mass. So I've got here 10 coins. Each one has a mass of 10 grams, so a total of 100 grams. Now, very, very simply, we are going to put them in the plastic pot and allow it to extend. Remember, it was at 50 before. It's now at 68. So that would suggest an 18 centimetre extension for a mass of 100 grams. But let's take an intermediate case. And let's just put one of the coins in here. And from there, you see, it's actually gone less than a centimetre. It's about five millimetres. Well, let's put two of them in. And um, it goes to nearly two. Let's try three. And it's gone to about 2.5. So let's put another one in four and it goes an extension of four centimetres, four centimetres with four coins and eighteen centimetres with ten. So the six extra coins extended it from four to eighteen which is an extension of 14 centimetres for six coins. So the six coins will give it an extension of a further 14 centimetres. Now we'll try the plasticine. Still at 50 or no mass. The ball of plasticine now extends it to 71 centimetres. This is the second part of the experiment to measure the specific heat capacity of plasticine. And you can see I've got the plasticine in the beaker and the thermistor is resting against it and it measures an initial resistance of 12. Now I'm going to add some really cold water and I've measured that again using the thermistor. This was at 5 degrees centigrade. Right, so now the initial resistance has gone up to 18.7. So the water is much colder, 18.9 now. And we'll start the clock. I'll use my watch for this. And it's reading a five minute time scale. And I'm going to stop the video for a moment because you don't want to watch this going for five minutes. And at the end of five minutes, I'm going to record the new value for the temperature of the water. Remember, it was a five degrees initially. Right, the time is up now, and in that five minutes, the temperature has changed, and therefore the resistance of the mister has changed, and the resistance is 17.9, and that corresponds to a temperature of 10.8 degrees centigrade. Right, just to summarize the experiment then, we started off with a ball of plasticine with a mass of 105 grams and its temperature initially was 21.8 degrees centigrade. I should have said I added exactly 200 grams of water which initially was at 5 degrees centigrade and that rose to 10.8 and of course the plasticine cooled down from 21.8 to 10.8. That meant that the temperature of the water had changed by 5.8 degrees centigrade 
and that was a rise of temperature whereas the Pleistocene it was a change of 11 degrees and that was a drop in temperature. Now knowing the mass of both the water and the Pleistocene, knowing the change in temperature of the water and the Pleistocene and knowing that the specific heat capacity of water is 4,000 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade, you should be able to calculate the specific heat capacity of the Pleistocene. But there are some errors in this. What about the warm air around the beaker? Well, you've noticed that I have actually insulated it by wrapping a towel around it. Now, I wonder if you did that with yours. And strictly speaking, I should now go on and do a control experiment with just water in the beaker without the plasticine and see how much the temperature of the water rose on its own during that five minute period. And we could then correct our result to allow for that input of heat energy from the surrounding air. And if you've done that, that is a good plus for your results of the experiment. So I wonder how many of you actually did allow for the heat passing into the water just from the air, not from the plasticine. Now we've dealt with some of the problems and inaccuracies of the experiment, but there's one or two more things that I'd like to ask you. What was the most difficult thing? Well, I think you'll probably find it was transferring the cold water into the beaker with the plasticine in it. Um, in the first part, perhaps measuring the extension correctly. And I wonder what you could have done to improve it. Well, I would suggest do another experiment. In other words, repeat the experiment and see whether or not the results were better. What about the ice? Why did I make sure there was no ice in with the water and the plasticine? Well, the specific latent heat of fusion of the ice. If the ice had actually melted, energy would have been needed to melt any pieces of ice that were in the water and therefore, of course, made the result much more inaccurate. The room temperature, of course, we've talked about. What about the glass beaker? Well, the heavier beaker would have absorbed more heat energy and we haven't allowed for that at all. We haven't allowed for the rise in temperature of the glass and we would have needed the specific heat capacity of the glass and the mass of the beaker in order to do that. So one further point, what would have happened if we'd actually taken the water temperature initially, instead of cooling it down to five degrees, what if we'd actually used water that started at 10 degrees, still below room temperature, but not as cold as before? Well, I think you realize that that would have meant there would be less heat energy flowing into the experiment from the room. It would also have meant, though, that the, the experiment would have taken rather longer because the difference in temperature between the plasticine ball and the water was not so great. And you may know that the rate of flow of heat depends on the difference in temperature between the two objects. And finally, what did you get for the result? Well, I got about 900 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. So I think, bearing in mind all the inaccuracy of the experiment, if you got anywhere between about, let's say, 700 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade and, um, what should we say, 1,200, I think that's fine because it's the right order and knowing approximately the value for quantities, which you can then make other experiments to test more precisely, is a very good idea.
to have a feel for the sort of answer that you might get.